All right, so in this one, we wanna actually create our user login validation stuff for the user login serializer. Um, and a couple things that I wanna do here is first of all, I wanna be able to authenticate this user based off of either their username or email and then checking their password with that versus using both of those things. This is kind of a common practice that you will see um, when it comes to authentication is using one of those two things. So what we're gonna do here then is we're going to say allow blank equals to true on username is also required equals to false. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it into the email. So it's gonna be one or the other. So that means that down here in validate, we wanna do email equals to data.get email and then we'll say none. So if email does not exist or if it's not in the validation, then we'll put the default as none. This is actually how it works, so you actually don't have to write none, but I'm just gonna explicitly say it in here. And then username is gonna be the exact same thing. So data.get username or none. So right off the bat, we will do a validation error. So if not email or not username, then we'll raise validation error a username or email must or is required to log in. So that should be fairly self-explanatory, right? If there's not an email and there's not a username, excuse me, if there's not a user email or a username, then um, this should not be or, this should be and. So if there's not an email and there's not a username, then that. That's the error that we wanna see. So since we have these things or one of these things, we actually wanna check and see that our user actually exists. So we're gonna definitely wanna do a queue lookup. This is from Django. So from Django.db.models import queue. And down back into our user login validation, we're gonna try and get our user or a user object based off of this. So we're gonna say user equals to user.objects.filter and using those Q lookups, we're gonna say Q email is equal to email, straight line slash Q username is equal to username. Okay, and then I'm also gonna do distinct here, just in case we need it, but this is um, allowing us to say if there's duplicates, so if there's two of them in there, um, then let's just get one of them. So two of the same model, basically. So the Q lookups require this distinct call in there. Um, so here we wanna say if user.exists and user.count is equal to one. Um, so this user count equal to one is really important with this distinct stuff here. Then we'll say user equals to user.first. Otherwise, we're gonna raise another validation error saying that um, this username, oh, whoops, let's put that into a string. This username slash email is not valid. Okay, so let's talk about this validation here. We're doing a query set search. We're making sure that this email or username, so that line right there saying email or username is a user model, and there's only one of them, so this distinct is there. So if it exists, perfect, that's that's one clause, and then also that that query set has a count of one. So there's only one actual object in there. And then if there is one actual object, we'll set that user as the first one, or the only one for that matter. And then we will, if not, we will raise a validation error saying that there's an error. Cool. So now what we wanna do is say if user, and I also wanna say, let's do user object here actually. So user obj equals to user first, and I'll put up here, user obj is none. So then down here, if there is a user object or user instance, then we're gonna check this. We'll basically say, if not user obj dot check password. So we wanna check the password now, and we'll do password equals to data password. Now we know the password key has to be in there because we didn't do required equals to false. We know that password key has to be there, so we can now check it. And if that is not there, we'll say raise validation error, incorrect credentials, 
please try again. Okay. So again, user object, this is saying that the user object's there. By default, it's not there. Once we check that it's there, we're gonna check the password against that user object or that user instance. And then if it's not the right password, then it will raise a validation error. Otherwise, we can actually return that data, which we wanna add one thing to it, which is the token. And right now, I'll just say some random token. And that is where this field actually comes in. Allow blank equals to true, read only equals to true. So it's only gonna be read only, and that's what's gonna be returned back to us, or at least it should. So let's go ahead and refresh in here, and I'll say ABC123. Not positive if this is the right user or not, but we'll, we'll find out very soon. And then at Gmail, password, hit post. Incorrect credentials, credentials please try again. So it's possible that that password's incorrect. So let's just register a new user here. And I'll just say CFE123, and then CFE123 at Gmail, CFE123 at Gmail, and then enter that password, hit post. Cool, user was created. And then we'll log in, username. Um, let's try username first, CFE123, hit post. Um, username email field is not valid, so there might be something in there. Let's try that in a moment. But anyway, so now we've got this, we'll post it out and then we actually get the user. So the problem that we have is this right here, and that is the username and email is not valid, right? So let's go ahead and print out this user. I, I think I have an idea of why it's doing this, um, but we'll go ahead and print out the user to see it. We'll hit post and go into terminal, and what we see is username CFE, ABC, and CFE123. So if we jump into the user itself, the reason that we're seeing this issue is because we have a couple users that have zero email. They don't actually have an email address. So what we wanna do is update this user field one more time and we'll just say user dot um, equals to user dot exclude email underscore underscore is null equals to true. So that will take out the ones that have an empty email from this filter because of course we left out the email on our search itself so if I refresh in here, hit continue, um, it still it should actually do it for us. So let's try it one more time by actually refreshing the page. One, two, three, one, two, three, paste it. And it looks like it's not actually coming through. So let's print out those users again. And we'll say user. Try that again and we get still the same users it looks like, yep. So let's try one more thing and we'll just do exclude email I exact equals to just an empty string. Try it one more time, hit post, and now it actually works. There we go. So we've got that one single user. So that was only a user issue or an email issue in of itself, right? So we just needed to check and test it and that's the importance of that stuff. Um, cool, so that's actually our user login. We've now created it and it works pretty well for us. So of course, one other option would be to just have one single field that is username or email. But as far as testing is concerned, this validation is going to work well for us. So we can actually submit either one. Email or username can actually be submitted from the end user as either one, except we have the email field is the validation. But if you call this a char field, it would still work actually. It would just work slightly different. Um, but I'm gonna leave it as this because this gives us just a little bit more flexibility on how we sub submit things and send things. So if, they, if your um, API, you just wanted to collect users' emails and you wanted to go this way, you could just use the email field itself and not even use the username field um, inside of the post. So this allows us to actually do that. And then finally, this token here is a token that we'll use when we actually want to do authentication on any particular thing, such as our comments. So the serializers, um, let's say like our comment um, create serializer right here, we would have the permissions in here, or excuse me, the views, not the serializer, but the view, we would have a permission class or an authentication class for the actual token. And then that token would be used in there and then it'd be able to do all the things 
that we expect it to do. All right, so if you have any questions on what we did with this user login serializer and the validation specifically, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.